Cal tells us that this stuff is fake in at least two ways. First, she does not always follow the script to the end. As noted above, book one, in which Maria's two apocryphal works are gathered, is called On Obedience, and thus it seems hardly an accident if Cal chooses to dissolve it precisely there. For chromatic diet, she follows the rule for six days. The rule is that she, she's supposed to eat food of only one color in a day, yellow for Monday, red for Tuesday, etc. But she renounced on the seventh. Like God, she took a vacation, she says in the book. Novels are all very well, but not necessarily so very delectable if you, have, if you leave them to the latter. Second hit about the fraudulence and the bad, bad, bad forgery, the photographs of chromatic diet, diet and of the, the other piece uh, envisioned by Oster called Days Under the Sign of B, C, and W, are much too neat to be gen genuine cow. Hervé Guibert remarked that, in general, the photos were failures, I call Guibert. The so-called photographer, she can't even take a photo, though she's making progress. For the first good photo the she showed me, and proudly of that, one of his boring shots of American tombs solely inscribed his mother, father, twins, or first wife, it was not even her when aimed, but aimed, but a friend was accompanying her. Now, would Guibert have, Guibert have approved of the shots taken by Cal in Maria's name, they are less blurry and have finer grain than those of the sleepers, for example. Nothing is less certain. She was much too he was much too fine a critic to have been thinking of such things when judging the style of the photograph. The photos of Gotham Handbook, the book seven of Blue Le Jeu, by contrast, are pure cow. People are usually shot from the back. In 1990, the bank's private eye, eager to help her out, shows her other surveillance tape this time geared to catch petty thieves in the supermarket. I quote, the subject was seen stealing three pairs of baskets. The subject was seen stealing two lighters. The subject was seen, was seen. I like the style. Boy, why link these faces to those of the bank's clients? I did not insist. So she canceled the bank's commission. I quote, I kept thinking that these images were not enough in themselves. They need text. This text what, that is me, my trademark, image and text. If I showed found documents without adding my own experience, I would be betraying my own style. She likes the style of these images because it is a style of withdrawal, but this withdrawal is not hers and the mask doesn't adhere. This feeling becomes more and more acute. In 1994, she asked Jean Baudrillard to write captions for the bank's security image. I quote, now I had images taken by a machine and text written by someone else. What was my role in all this? I needed to act. In 1998, it is the too easy success of one of her roundabouts attempt to find some useful uh, banking material that puts her off. There was no progress, but it was holding on by itself. No, sorry. There was progress, but it was holding on by itself. No need for any support on my part. Things were definitely got not going well. Either my ideas were bad, not up to the image from the bank, or my drafts had a life of their own. In 2001, she knows, on the failed attempt side of the ledger, the list is getting longer. A relief, as she, as she calls it, comes in 2003, a few months ago, at last. She understands a mental block, I quote. In my work, I make use of my romantic downfall. Why should it be so different from my professional failings? The difference is that the failure of a project does not distress me as much. I remained apathetic in the face of my own impotence. I did not reflect upon it. I did not think of capitalizing on it because I did not suffer enough. It's always the same story, to be happy with a man and having nothing to say, or to be miserable and, so something out of, and, and to make something out of his misery. One of her friends dots the eyes for her when he asked her why she, she was clinging so much to this theme of money and to what exactly she associated this <coughs> word, money. I answered, I have some. He concluded that it was the reason why I could, not tell in, I could not tell anything about it. The solution, which was so long in coming, is easy as a pie. To speak of failure, since I can only speak of lack. An uh, exception is called monomania. I suggested above uh, earlier that Cal was wary of melancholy. Yet she has something in common with those melancholic mourners who transform their beloved lost, lost one into an ideal of perfection, namely, what the 19th century expert, forensic expert Etienne Esquirol, then the psychiatrist Pierre Janet, called monomania. Thus, it is not so surprising that 
and Marina van Zalen in a study of this mental affliction that dominated the immediate post-romantic era to choose to deal with a sophical case in order to answer the question, what is monomania today? Like Jeanne's patients, fetishists and hypochondriacs, phobic and anal characters of all kinds, like Flaubert subjecting himself to a monastic regimen in his quest for the unreachable perfect sentence, like Baudelaire's highly deranged Mademoiselle Bistouri, or the sinister Professor Keane in Elias Canotti's Auto da Fe, Cal, or rather the person she's making up in her work, is terrorized by void. Like this monomaniac of the past, she fills up the emptiness of daily life with a theological overflow of her idée fixe. She blots out all disorder, or at least tames it, in submitting to the absolute control of inalienable, inalienable I can't remember, protocols. The difference with her predecessors, underlined by Van, Van Zalen, is that instead of fleeing the arbitrariness of the real, the Barthesian contingency, scattered fragments without necessity, and instead of replacing this zeal, this real, this materiality, with an idealized and perfectly focused unreal, Cal transformed chance itself, that is, the phobia of all monomaniacs before her, into a best ally, a prized material, a cure. Sure, this chance that she can is dealt with at the remove, for it governs the life of others, never hers. Which is not to say that chance does not influence the lives of Sophie to use her phrase. Having decided to shadow as far as Venice, the man of whom she had barely caught a glimpse during a Parisian peregrination, she spares no, neither us nor herself none of the long wait at the exit of monuments she visits, none of the cliches of the touristic circuit. She becomes a chameleon. The miraculous advantage of such a mimetic strategy, continuously adopted by Carl in her work, that it ensures both identity, I am the one who changed all the time, I am metamorph metamorphosis personified, and non-identity, I am only a perfect copy. Moreover, under the guise of giving some meaning to that, uh, that which has none, contingency, it signifies in reality that the game is utterly gratuitous. And <coughs> Quote here. The means that are implemented exceed so largely the useful degree of limitation that one had to resort to the notion of hyperteria to explain the kind of purposeless delirium of perfection for which insects provide us with such puzzling examples, writes Roger Kaiwa with regard to animal mimeticism. The main thing, as Kaiwa, is a quasi vertiginous pursuit of invisibility for itself. And here I have to give you the footnote in which Kaiwa defines the term of hypertelia. Hypertelia is the excessive development of an organ. Instead of fulfilling its proper function, it becomes sometimes useless and even dangerous. At their normal size, the tusks of certain pachyderms, such as elephants, are formidable weapons. But those of mammoths of the glacial period were too long. They curled up into themselves, and they were as cumbersome as they were harmless. Hypertelia affected cars registering capabilities. She became an infallible clerk. She misses nothing. She stores and regurgitates any information at will. And in her obsession, she imagined us as indefatigable readers. Yet, what could not say that she doesn't know satiation? All her works have a beginning and an end. A growing anxiety with regard to the piece called Unfinished, signaled in the title, was precisely due to the fact that she could not finish this work, be done with it. To begin anything, she needs an exonerous trigger, most often a pure coincidence, once again an obvious mark of contingency uh, in, for the sweet Venetian that is perhaps Sheherazade, refrains from adding anything. The final, the final period is a final period. 